Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 17th, 2020, recorded around 2.50 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we want to touch on this real quick before jumping into the Atlantic. We have heard, we do have a new hurricane out here, Hurricane Geneva, I do believe. Um, and this is going to be moving off towards the west-northwest here over the next couple of days or so. Impacts will be felt along the Mexican coastlines. Again, not significant, but there will be some heavy rainfall and flooding, which can be significant in itself across this area. And certainly there will be some uh, higher uh, surf in this area, especially up towards the Baja of California. This is expected to become a powerful Category 4 hurricane moving right now. Uh, there is no land threats to this particular area. However, of course, if you live in the Baja, this is going to be coming dangerously close. So for you folks in the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas, the Baja of California, you need to be monitoring the progress of this developing hurricane, powerful hurricane. Uh, good news is that it is going to be weakening significantly once it gets uh, up here into the Baja because of cooler uh, sea surface temperatures in this region, a lot drier air in the atmosphere, and then this will be eventually turning out and away from land. Uh, but again, this will bring some impacts to those areas. So, excuse me, if you know anyone that does live there, you know, give them a heads up um, that, you know, there is a hurricane that is going to be passing dangerously close to these islands. And again, don't focus exactly on where this cone is. Impacts are going to extend out well out uh, in advance and well outside of this cone and we can see that here on the visible satellite from tropicaltidbits.com and uh, we'll kind of let that buffer if it doesn't we'll just yeah it's not going to buffer but oh well um so you can see a very closed uh, tight circulation here uh, we have this banding structure out and away from it this is what i was talking about impacts um, along the mexican coastlines again you can kind of see how there is some showers and thunderstorms and some of these far outer bands the inner core structure is actually right in here so this in terms of the uh, radius of maximum winds is going to stay confined in this area however uh Areas right along the coast can easily see uh, tropical storm force gusts and some of those squalls in through there. And you can see it's trying to wrap up pretty nicely, well on its way to becoming a major hurricane. And that will be passing once again well off towards the west northwest here. A uh, nice cirrus outflow expanding here with a pretty tight inner core and somewhat of an eye like structure beginning to appear. But again, in terms of any uh, direct landfall impacts is not expected at this time. This will move on out to sea and there will be of no consequence here on Saturday. But again, this will generate some swells for this area. So pay attention to that because that can kill people. Now, uh, one other thing here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, two other uh, systems, d uh, developing systems that do have a low chance of developing over the next uh, couple of days or so. We'll have to watch this one uh, right here for, again, some land potential, but not really expecting much out of that. And again, this little system, no consequence to land at all. So what's going on right now? Well, in the Atlantic Basin, we have a couple of, we have a lot to talk about, not just a couple of things. We have a lot to talk about today. First of all, we have Invest Area 97L, which now has a 50% chance of developing over the next five days. Again, this is a system that is moving across the central Atlantic. It's actually positioned more so in about here. Uh, but this is moving uh, towards the Lesser Antilles today and tonight and through tomorrow. So what this is going to do is bring some heavier rain showers, squally conditions, uh, to portions of the Lesser Antilles, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, uh, St. Lucia, Barbados, the Grenadines, those areas will have some impacts from this in terms of gusty winds, in terms of showers and thunderstorms. This is not going to be a hurricane or anything else passing through the Lesser Antilles from 97L. 
eventually this will begin because this is moving pretty quickly we'll get out of this area pretty quickly as well it will then move and start to slow down into the caribbean once that does that this will have a more favorable environment by days four five and beyond somewhere in this vicinity to try to go on to be a tropical cyclone now again this will also have some land threat potential uh, potentially for jamaica uh, the cayman islands out here uh, belize the yucatan peninsula even portions of cuba you need to be monitoring the progress of invest 97l again this will likely or you know maybe uh, potentially go on to be another tropical storm depression whatever uh, somewhere in this vicinity beyond you know four to five days that's partially some of the reason why the chances of formation have not increased um, throughout today is generally because this isn't really expected to develop until it gets into a more favorable environment in the western caribbean and uh, then potentially even the gulf of mexico and that will be something we really have to monitor here as we go on throughout time is where exactly does this go again right now the greatest land potential and, and any significant land potential right now is going to be confined to the Lesser Antilles for heavy rainfall, flash flooding potential, mudslides, etc. You know, maybe some gusty winds. Uh, but beyond that, you know, we really have to start looking out for Jamaica, uh, Belize, the Cayman Islands, even portions of Cuba. Now's your time to start thinking about your hurricane preparedness plans and what you're going to be doing in the event that something does come come you know your guys this way you know some of the models are quite bullish on this and some aren't and that is one of the things we really will have to decipher and we'll discuss here on the modeling in, in just a couple of moments elsewhere we have another system across the eastern atlantic base center now to the west of the cabo verde islands which is right here and this disturbance has a 70 percent chance over the next five days as it too will now approach the lesser antilles and uh the uh, northern islands as well so this could also be a land of threat potential currently to some of the northern lesser antilles puerto rico saint croix um you know some of those areas uh guadalupe you know etc those areas are now under the gun for this disturbance now this may or may not impact those islands it's too, a little too soon to determine that a lot is going to depend on the steering currents which we'll talk about here in a moment the bottom line is that if you are in this general vicinity even all the way down to trinidad, trinidad and tobago although this will likely not get that far south it doesn't hurt to be ready and you know one of the main things here is that this is going to produce heavy rainfall flooding mudslides you know possibly gusty winds you know even if this is just a weak tropical wave passing through it's still going to provide those impacts so regardless and you know right now be safe and sorry i would go ahead and start thinking about what you're going to do in the event of something coming your way and putting those plans into play because this is only we're talking about four to five maybe six days out so we don't have you know we have you know about half a week or less than half a week um, but you got you know four or five six days to prepare too early to speculate what's going to happen beyond this point for anywhere in this vicinity uh, but the modeling is getting more aggressive and is jumping to this disturbance future 98l that will be moving towards the west northwest will likely take it a north track potentially but again a lot is determinant on what is going to happen with the general area of troughiness to the north etc and we'll talk about that here in just a moment so if we look here on the visible satellite, this is from uh, the COD Meteorology College page site here. First of all, in the Eastern Pacific, you can clearly see uh, where our hurricane is, nice and round, compacted little system there in the Eastern Pacific. Some impacts from Mexico, again, uh, mainly heavy rain, gusty winds from time to time, even could induce some, uh, uh, some landslides and uh, certainly could also induce some uh, flash flooding potential there. 
elsewhere we have this kind of front draped down across the gulf of mexico right now and while this we're not expecting any development out here in the gulf of mexico or anywhere else along these fronts you typically or sometimes get little eddies to start developing little swirls and we'll watch the Gulf of Mexico, but we're not expecting anything from there. Uh, but some showers and thunderstorms certainly in the Gulf and across Florida. You know, basically nothing more than your typical summertime afternoon thunderstorms across those areas. Had a couple of good storms out here in the Orlando metro, uh, certainly near Winter Garden just a little while ago with near 70 mile per hour winds. So that was pretty good. Um, we have a little bit of a sheared future. I think this is the remnants here of Josephine out here, not really doing a whole lot, being sheared, uh, and thanks partly because of this uh, area of uh, troughiness and uh, our front right there. And then you can see the deep tropics lining up wave after wave after wave. This is 97L. This is our other disturbance. This is another disturbance. Well, these two are kind of intermingled uh, between each other, but this western disturbance seems to be the one that the models are uh, in inducing tropical cyclogenesis on and the more waves coming off of Africa back here. So if we look here at Invest Area 97L, again, it's kind of disorganized this afternoon and evening. It's kind of evening time there. And here's Barbados. Here's the Lesser Antilles, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, um, those areas. Again, this is kind of the large envelope of energy with 97L. And you can just see how fast it's generally moving uh, off towards the west and northwest. Again, this is coming off here at a pretty low latitude. So the Coriolis effect here isn't as strong as it is in higher latitudes uh, plus with this moving roughly at about 15 to 20 knots or about 20 to 25 miles per hour off towards the west or northwest it's very hard to get a bundling of the energy down in this region so that's kind of the one saving grace although again having a larger sprawled out system is going to bring impacts over a larger vicinity so for you folks in the islands you're getting some of those impacts right now and that's going to be continuing off and on throughout the day and into you know into portions of uh, parts of tomorrow uh, but again you know generally we don't have a fairly focal area and, and fairly focused effect of, of any energy it's a very broad system you can see though there is some turning in this larger kind of wave envelope there is a little bit of turning with this you can see in some of those uh, you know lower level cloud features uh, that they are kind of inducing some spin. Uh, this is mainly because we do have a trough axis that's kind of positioned in this region, or not, not a trough axis, but a wave axis rather that's positioned somewhere in this vicinity out through here. And this is inducing a little bit of spin around that axis, but you're actually not able to get any consolidation in this region. It's just simply moving too fast and in a little bit of a sheared environment, which we could take a look at here is that if we actually kind of look at this, you can see that our system is roughly enveloped within about 15 to 20 knots of vertical wind shear and a lot of shear further up to the north. Now, uh, this shear is going to relax here over the next couple of days. So while this system right now is in a very favorable area, this shear is going to start relaxing over the next few days and that is going to become less and less as there is less vertical motion over the Eastern Pacific. That is why we have all of this wind shear and that is inducing a tut like feature over here basically a big upper level low that's causing wind shear just to be blown across this area you can kind of see that area in through here uh, but as 97L begins to approach uh, this area it will enter a more favorable environment here in the western or yeah in the western Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico eventually if it decides to go there a much favorable much more favorable environment is kind of awaiting uh, 97L. Uh, so assuming that 97L can kind of hold its own throughout the next few days as it moves into a pocket of higher shear environment, uh, this will have the potential to consolidate once it's out here and uh, off the coast there of the Yucatan or whatever. Uh, but again, where exactly things try to develop is kind of a tricky situation. 
And with the modeling being not so well with Tropical Cyclone Genesis this year, it's kind of a little bit harder to actually depict where things are going to go from there. So again, there's kind of a lot of intricacies playing into this over the next couple of days. But eventually, this will move generally towards the west-northwest here or towards the west. And again, in this vicinity, it has a much better chance of undergoing a tropical cyclone formation. Now, for the eastern Atlantic shot here, again, from tropical tibbets, a couple of things to note. So, first of all, you can see that we still do have a fair amount of dry air across this vicinity and, and across the northern Atlantic. However, this is soon to be 98L right here. And you can kind of see, excuse me, you can kind of see that what we have right now is a pocket of dry stable air to the north, uh, but this is, uh, you know, enveloped within a pretty moist environment. You don't see uh, dry air kind of being entrained into the circulation or whatever. There is a circulation here, a broad kind of mid-level center of circulation. You can see the spin out there pretty clearly. Um, but again, you know, this is not down at the surface yet. So it's going to take a little bit of time and this will eventually then start to gain latitude here over the next couple of days. This is at a fairly low latitude right now. And um, we can actually just go, if we go out to the uh, Atlantic wide shot here, if we just kind of look at the Atlantic wide shot, we'll back this up from earlier this afternoon. But again, you can see more dry air coming off uh, of Africa right now. There's our Hurricane 97L. You can see how this was, this kind of is intermingled with this. That's the big wave envelope of energy out there. This is now going to be taking over as the main energy source right now. And what will end up happening, we'll just kind of run this forward, is that this will eventually begin to gain some latitude here over the next couple of days. As again, this uh, troughiness is going to break down the ridge of high pressure out in this vicinity. That's going to allow this to end up gaining a little bit more latitude. But again, how much latitude depends on eventually how quickly this actually develops into a tropical cyclone because of the simple fact of the matter that a stronger a tropical system is likely to gain a lot more latitude. And right now, of course, it's just a broad mid-level turning in the atmosphere, not rooted at the surface, and thus it's not a tropical cyclone. So a lot remains to be seen on what is exactly going to happen, but we have some pretty good pulses of convection with this. It's really trying to tighten up, certainly looks a lot better organized than 90, uh, 97L. Uh, so I do uh, suspect that this will be gaining uh, 98L uh, over the next uh, probably couple of hours, probably uh, by about 8 o'clock this evening or probably by tomorrow morning we'll have 98L. That's probably a, a pretty fair bet with that. But again, this troughiness and this front and through here is really going to matter in terms of how much it breaks down that ridge and exactly where this decides to end up going over the next couple of days. Now, time to take a look at the, the modeling here. So this is kind of what we were talking about. And this is the GFS forecast, the 850 millibar vorticity. Basically, the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. We'll just run this forward to get some of those uh, images rendered. Uh, but again, your higher cyclonic spin is in this darker red here. And, and this is the signature of that hurricane over there in the eastern Pacific. That is a very round signature in the atmosphere. And that is what we are really looking for here. So a couple of things. We'll kind of run this forward. Now you can kind of see the wave envelope. This is 97L. Now again, strong upper level winds right now. And we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Is kind of precluding any significant development and fast movement. We fast forward to the next 48 hours and the GFS has what is likely a developing tropical cyclone, what is soon to be 98L, uh, as a developing tropical cyclone in this vicinity in the Western Atlantic. We'll run this forward and we can kind of see, if we move this out to the five day mark, uh, eventually this big ridge of high pressure is kind of still holding on. It's, it's kind of holding its own. Uh, but you see 97L is a little bit better defined. And, and that's what we were talking about is that this has a better chance once it approaches the Western uh, Caribbean. You're not going to see this develop into a powerful hurricane right now in the Central Caribbean right now. It's just too hostile of an environment. 
Uh, but once you get over here into the Gulf, things start to change in the Western Caribbean. You see somewhat of a disturbance signature there. Run this out one more again. The GFS has been correcting to tropical cyclone genesis, and we, and we can kind of point that out from the previous run. We'll move that forward here to 72 hours. And you can see how the GFS has kind of been consistently correcting. That's the 6Z or that's the 12Z run yesterday, or I'm sorry, the 6Z run today at about 1 o'clock in the morning. And this is the 12Z run today, uh, initialized at about 7 o'clock. And you can see definitely a better jump uh, to what is likely to be a tropical cyclone in this vicinity uh, in the Western Atlantic from what is soon to be 98L and our, our disturbance out there in the Eastern Atlantic. And that really has me wondering whether or not the GFS is actually picking up uh, the full resolution of it, and it's likely not. And we can see this here. Uh, another way of looking at, though, at the unfavorable conditions in the Caribbean is if we kind of move this, this is the 200 millibar winds and the streamline vectors. And again, 97L is going to be moving into an area right over here. And you can kind of notice that we do have a little bit of shear being induced. You, you can notice some of that uh, south, like almost basically southwesterly flow uh, blowing into basically the north-northwest direction. And then that quickly changes around over here to be more of a northeast flow. Now, typically this will be favored of a little bit of a cyclonic outflow, but you can see what's going to end up happening. We just have a fairly decent area of shear all bundled in this. And again, this is probably a convective feedback moment from the GFS kind of precluding significant development. And what I mean by that is that the GFS, all of its rising motion stays in the Southeast Pacific. And I'm not so sure that the GFS is really picking up on that correctly. And we talked about that here a couple of days ago is that the GFS has a convective feedback problem. It's well known. The higher resolution or the newer GFS model, um, we can switch to this real quick. The GFS para for what it's worth on the 0Z or the 6Z run did have a developed tropical cyclone out here and 97L is kind of located in here um, but the 12Z run of the GFS parallel which is not because of the data assimilation excuse me because of the data assimilation it's not necessarily available on websites like tropical tibbets all the time excuse me so what actually ends up happening is you know, I've seen other people kind of throw around the 12Z GFS para, the, the parallel version. This is like the new version that NSEP and the modeling centers here in America are working on. And the GFS parallel, the, 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 the parallel version of the GFS is developing 97L into something once it reaches this vicinity. And for what it's worth, it's also somewhat developing this system as well. So um, it, it is just something to monitor. The, the old GFS, this is still um, the previous GFS forecast we are looking at is still on the older uh, modeling resolution. It, it's not as high of a resolution if, from my understanding. And it's also just, you know, other bug fixes and stuff like that that they're working on the parallel version. So that's just kind of one thing with that. But again, um, the bottom line is that we are likely to have two tropical systems to keep an eye on and the more energy coming off of Africa. And we can sort of look at this here on the uh, European forecast, the 12Z run. And again, a couple of things to know. Again, this is 97L right here. This is kind of the broad energy associated with soon to be 98. And you can see how quickly that develops it into a tropical cyclone. By 72 hours, we have a formidable cyclone here um, approaching the islands out through here. Again, That this is by uh, early Thursday morning. And again, this is our little wave energy right here with 97. We move this out to about 120 hours, and it's a pretty formidable cyclone. We'll just go one more, you know, for what it's worth. You know, this really has me in a very peculiar position. And we can look at this a little bit here from the height lines in the uh, 500 millibar geopotential height. 
and what we're looking at is your uh, strength of the ridge your uh, higher pressures are in darker red and through here and your lower pressures are in these uh, you know teal and uh, your greens and yellows and we'll, we'll move this forward to when we have a tropical cyclone. We'll move this out to the five-day mark here. Actually, we'll push this back just a moment. There we go. So the 96 here, this is by Friday morning. And again, what we have on the subnoptic scale, according to the euro, is, again, there's a general area of, of lower pressure across the continental United States. Right now, we have this basically an area of troughiness approaching the United States. You can kind of see that little bit of a dip here in the Midwestern states. This is kind of our trough, and your trough axis is positioned roughly in through here. That's your trough axis. That trough is helping to cut down on a little bit of this ridging here over the next few days. That allows the system to gain a little bit of latitude, but you notice that troughiness isn't that strong, and thus it's not really cutting this ridge significantly. And if we remove, you know, go on past five days, you know, there's a lot of speculation and we're just simply not going to do that. The bottom line is that there is likely going to be something to talk about as we uh, approach, you know, the weekend here. And again, we're talking about this weekend. So there is two systems that we have to keep an eye on. This uh, 97L will be a threat this weekend down here across, uh, you know, the Western Caribbean. Whatever comes of 97L, it still will bring some impacts. Rain, you know, maybe some gusty winds, maybe some flash flooding, especially, you know, in some of this very mountainous terrain, uh, especially across Jamaica and some of the mountains there. I've been there to, you know, some of the mountains and it's, you know, very quite tall mountains. You can have a really good view. That's a story for another day. And, you know, maybe I'll share my experiences being down in Jamaica. But the bottom line is that 97L is likely to be somewhat of a concern. Now, exactly where it goes past five days, how strong it's going to be, or whatever else, I don't know. Nobody knows for that matter. So, if you see anybody posting these crazy model runs of something hitting somewhere, understand that it's beyond five days. You know, if it's beyond, you know, 120 hours, that's beyond five days. And things are going to change. Just understand that. And as far as what is soon to be 98L, the same goes for that. Again, it is too early to determine specific impacts for any specific location. However, it goes without saying for the islands, you need to be prepared. Everybody that lives in a hurricane prone area, you need to be prepared. All right? Done harping that for the day. <laughs> With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I will be switching to two updates a day starting tomorrow. However, on Thursday, I'm only going to be able to do one update as I have some conflicting schedules with work and everything else. So it's going to be a little bit harder for me to do videos as, you know, work and college and all that stuff. So just kind of wanted to let you guys know so you're in the loop of everything. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.